Good day, my dear friends. I'm Dr. Osama Ibrahim from Easy and Different Radiology. Today, my presentation is going to be short and sweet. As this is uh, six episodes from the radiological anatomy, today I will talk about the pituitary gland anatomy. So, let's get started. First of all, I want to talk about the cella tersica, and this is the uh, home of the pituitary gland. This is the boundary, bony boundary of the pituitary gland. This is part from the cella ter tersica. And uh, the cella tersica composed from this fossa, uh, which including the pituitary gland. And uh, this is, uh, there are two posterior clonoid process. And the wall of the bony component of the uh, cella tersica is composed from these dorsum cellae. The dorsum cellae with the clivus, this part from the bones forming the base of the occipital bone or the floor of the occipital bone and here there are the anterior process similar to this uh, posterior clonoid process and this, this, this process called anterior clonoid process and now i presented with this uh, sagittal reformat image from the ct as we will know and discuss before the differentiations between CT and MRI by the bone which are bearing bright in the CT as we see here. Now, uh, this Sagittary format imaging have uh, multiple uh, labels and these numbers of labels representing anatomical structures. Uh, uh, if you want to think about these anatomical structures, one here is representing the Clive spoon and the two is representing the sphenoid sinus and this is the cella tersica this fossa which is we'll talk about it in the previous slides and this uh, gray uh, structures is the pituitary gland within the cella tersica what about this three three is the posterior clonoid process as we'll discuss and the wall of the clivus posteriorly is the dorsum cellae what about the Eight, eight representing a part from the uh, brain stem which is called bones and this is another part which is called midbrain. What about this uh, uh, projection, soft tissue projection here anterior to the uh, midbrain? Uh, this one is called the uh, mammillary body. Okay, this diagram is representing the pituitary gland and it is a maximized image and also uh, showing the structures of the pituitary gland which is composed from the posterior pituitary and the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland have three parts or three bars. Uh, the first part or the proximal part is called the bars tuberalis and the uh, second part is the bars intermedia and the last part is the bars distalis. However, the posterior pituitary gland is composed from the infundibular stock, which is surrounded by these bars the tuberalis of the anterior pituitary to forming the infundibulum or the infundibular stock. Uh, and the distal part is the bars nervosa because there are multiple nerves here in this uh, posterior pituitary gland. Uh, what about these anterior structures for the pituitary gland is the optic chiasm and the uh, other structures here is the hypothalamus and this hypothalamus is connected to the uh, infundibular stock through this median eminence and this uh, region is uh, the tuber uh, sinurium uh, which is ended by the, these projections which is called the mammillary body. So, what is the adenohypophysis? The hypophysis is another name for the pituitary gland. Adenohypophysis is representing the anterior pituitary gland. And this part is a loop of the gland that regulates several physiological processes, including stress, growth, reproduction, and lactations, as it uh, responsible for productions of several hormones. And this is the pituitary gland within the cella tersica, and this part is representing the anterior pituitary gland, and this prior to part in the, uh, this T1 weighted image is representing the posterior pituitary gland, this is the 
in fundibular and the anterior part is the optic chiasm the hypothalamus here and thalamus here and this is the tuber cinerum mammillary body and this is the brain stem mid brain bones and the medulla oblongata fourth ventricle and cerebellum so this uh, uh, MRI sequence is a sagittal T1 because the CSF in the prepontine cistern here or in the fourth ventricle here appeared dark and also the bone marrow in the clivus here appeared bright. So this is the T1 and sagittal view. Where is the clivus? Can you uh, uh, suspect it? Where is the clivus? This one is the clivus as we discussed before. And where is the dorsum cilli? Dorsum cilli is the most bony part of the clivus here. Posterior clonoid process. This is the process in the cella tersica. Posterior clonoid process here and anterior clonoid process here. So this is the posterior clonoid process. If you want to take a few seconds for think, where is the sphenoid sinus? I can give you also at the end of presentation the time for some thinking, thinking as a practice. This is the black one, is the sphenoid sinus. Now, what, where is the anterior pituitary? Yes, this is all the pituitary gland within the cella tersica fossa, and the anterior part from it is the anterior pituitary gland. However, the posterior pituitary gland is uh, representing by these bright structures at sagittal T1. This is a neurohypothesis and this is the adenohypothesis. And now, where is the membrane? Yes, this, all this part is the brain stem and this is the cerebellum, the fourth ventricle between the cerebellum and the brain stem and the more proximal part from the brain stem is the Midbrain, and posterior to it, there are the, the aqueduct of sylvius, which are connecting the third ventricle CSF with the fourth ventricle CSF. Now, where is the mammary body or mammillary body? Yes, this is this projections anterior to the midbrain between the optic chiasm, and uh, this is. Uh, between the optic chiasm, tuber cinerum, and the midbrain is called the mammillary body. And now, where is the infundibulum? Yes, this one is the infundibulum, which is connecting the posterior pituitary gland to the hypothalamus through this median eminence. And now, where is the optic chiasm? Optic chiasm is anterior to the pituitary gland here, anterior to the infundibulum. And corpus callosum, this one is a corpus callosum, which composed from the genu anteriorly body and the spleen and posteriorly. There are part from the corpus callosum most anterior and inferior structures is called the restrum. All this is the corpus callosum. And now where is the force of ventricles? We talked before, force of ventricle between the cerebellum and the pons. And now, where is the tuber cinerum? Tuber cinerum is the gray matter uh, structures between the mammillary body posteriorly and the optic chiasm anterior. So, this one is the tuber cinerum. Okay. So, the tuber cinerum is a hollow eminence of gray substance situated between the Corbora mammillaria, which meaning mammillary body behind, and the optic chiasm in front. Laterally, it is continuous with the anterior perforated substance and anteriorly with the thin lamina, the lamina terminalis. And now this diagram is a beautiful diagram for the sagittal view of the pituitary gland which shows the anterior pituitary gland or adenohypophysis and the posterior pituitary gland or neurohypophysis which are connecting to the hypothalamus here through this infundibular stock 
and also anterior to the stock there are the optic chiasm and posterior there are the memory body between the memory body and the optic chiasm there are the tuber cinerum structure and this is the midbrain bone third fourth ventricle cerebellum and this is grams showing also the cella tersica the bony component which contain the pituitary gland and this is the clivus and this is the dorsum cellae and posterior coronoid process and anterior coronoid process so the neurohypothesis or the posterior pituitary gland is a loop of the gland that is functionally connected to the hypothalamus by the median eminence via a small tube called the pituitary stock also called the infundibular stock or the infundibulum infundibulum infundibular stock or pituitary stock or the same meaning actually this is the coronal diagram coronal view for the pituitary gland which appearing here within the cella tersica the pituitary gland is connecting by the uh, pituitary stock or infundibular stock to the hypothalamus and anterior there are the chiasm this is the third ventricle and the lateral aspect of the pituitary gland on both sides which is represented by this blue uh, color uh, is represented by the cavernous sinus the cavernous sinus contains artery which is the internal carotid artery and three cranial nerves third fourth fifth and six cranial nerves the oculomotor nerve trochlear nerve ophthalmic and the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and abducent uh, nerve uh, the internal carotid artery is uh, subdivided into the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery and the lateral to the cavernous sinus there are gray matter here and this gyrus is called the para hippocampus gyrus at the distal part of the film in the coronal image there are the sphenoid uh, sinus right and left uh, uh, distal to the cell tersica and now i want to uh, make practice by some uh, images to confirm our understanding the presentation this image i want to uh, from you to detect the mri sequence t1 t2 coronal sagittal like this and also there are some labels you want you should to discriminate the anatomical structure uh, which represented by these labels after the timer started so this is yellow arrow which structure represented and this green arrow and uh, red arrow and also blue arrow So this sequence is the T1 because the subcutaneous fat is bright and CSF appears dark and the white matter is brighter than the gray matter. So this is the coronal view of the T1 weighted image. Now, what is this arrow uh, anatomical structure represented? The yellow arrow is represented the carotid artery within the cavernous sinus as we see in the previous diagrams the cavernous sinus is the lateral structure to the pituitary gland on both sides. The carotid artery appears dark within the cavernous sinus. And the green arrow representing the sphenoid sinus, is are right and left sphenoid sinus. What is the red arrow is represented? This one structure is represented optic chiasm as we'll see as we uh, see that uh, already in the uh, previous slide and also these structures which contain csf and appeared proximal to the optic chiasm is the third ventricle which is continuating uh, proximally with the lateral ventricle through the foramen of monroe again we wanted to discriminate the sequence mri sequence and also these uh, labels uh, uh, numbers uh, we want to know how uh, what is the anatomical structures represented one two three and four start
okay one representing the structures between the mammillary body anteriorly and the optic chiasm, and optic chiasm anterior and the mammillary body posteriorly so these structures what is the name of these structures and first what is the name of the uh, mri sequence this is t1 fat suppression sagittal view two it representing to the infundibular stock between the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. And the three, this one, which appeared dark in this sequence because the fat is suppressed. So this is a fat suppression sequence because the fat in the uh, uh, clivus are suppressed. And also what is the structures for represented? It represented the thalamus because this region is the hypothalamus and this is the thalamus. And this is part from the third ventricle aqueduct of sylvius connecting csf to the fourth ventricle and this is bones midbrain medulla oblongata cerebellum and the prepontine cistern and also this is the this is the artery which appeared anterior to the bones by the same way what is the mri sequence and what is the three or four levels numbers represented the structure first this is the csf in the fourth ventricle which appeared bright so this is t2 weighted image in the sagittal view and these numbers one representing what hypothalamus because this is a thalamus and this is a hypothalamus two representing the mammillary body between the midbrain and the tuber cinerum and the anterior structure to the infundibulum this is the infundibulum and this is the pituitary gland within the cella tersica the anterior structure 3 is representing the optic chiasm and what about the 4? Four? 4 this is a CSF within the third ventricle so this is the answer again we uh, want to know what is these uh, labels represented structures or foramen Actually, this is a flare image because uh, uh, subcutaneous fats appeared suppressed and also the flowing fluids appeared dark signal. So, uh, uh, what is the blue arrow represented? Blue arrow is uh, pointed here to the most distal segment of the corpus callosum and this segment is called the rostrum of the corpus callosum. This is genu, body, and the splenum of corpus callosum and the orange uh, uh, orange uh, ring this ring is representing the cella tersica which composes the pituitary gland within it and the infundibular stock so this is a pituitary gland within the cella tersica what about the yellow oval label it representing this uh, dark structure and this dark structure is the aqueduct of sylvius which is connecting the fourth ventricle csf with the third ventricle csf so this is the aqueduct of Sylvius. And the last one is the green connecting the CSF between the fourth ventricle and the spinal canal is called the foramen of Magendi. I hope I provide you with uh, uh, clear knowledge about the MRI uh, anatomy of the pituitary gland. If you want to uh, take more details, you can uh, follow these three channels and also uh, this is my reference uh, from my daily work and other uh, references as you see and also if you want to follow me for uh, MRI learning lessons or steps every Wednesday and also I wait you in the every Sunday for rapid review anatomy and uh, every Friday or uh, Friday for mnemonic course. Thank you very much for watching and have a